Welcome back, football fans. This is RGR Football. I'm Ryan. This is me going rogue on your Kansas City Chiefs, as well as the rest of the NFL. And the rest of the NFL has a couple things to be concerned about. We are going to talk today about your newest weapon in the KC backfield, slash attached to the line, slash split out. Uh, he won't be in line, but Noah Gray is your new weapon for Patrick Mahomes. I know you guys have been waiting for this for quite a while. If you want to stick around, click the like and the sub and the bell notifications so you see everything that we have. Dan does break down film, so, does, so do I. Uh, so do a number of our guys. We have members that are going to give you some content. We have a lot of contributors. Uh, my team here in RGR is growing, and we love doing this for you. I know a lot of people are keyed up about no gray and it's been a struggle for me all summer long because the availability of film on duke is thin to put it nicely um and it has taken me quite a long while to scrape it together and get some all 22 to actually show you things that can give you some idea of what he's capable of and this way black right here is, a, is one of them uh coming across the formation you're going to see more of that later what it comes down to is thanks to a, a couple friends, I was able to get my hands on a couple of all 22s. They are going to be of the same opponent, North Carolina. So you can put that together as you like. But what we end up with is a 2020 and a 2019 look at Noah Gray. And I think you'll be a little surprised about the usage uh, in 2019 was a little bit more like what they're looking for in Kansas City. And we're going to go through a number of plays here, give you an idea of what he's capable of, what he is going to bring to this team, and what maybe some of the misconceptions are. You can see real quickly uh, in here, this is running at one and a half speed, by the way, so don't think that this is uh, that kind of lightning. This is just a, a quick overview of where Noah Gray is, and I want to show you his athleticism because he's a good athlete. He's not an elite athlete at the position. He's kind of a tweener, and he is used a lot in blocking. He's used a lot in short pivot routes, a lot of in-cutting uh, routes that help him, little curls, little things that are helping the quarterback, helping him help the quarterback. Uh, it runs a lot of out routes as well, and you're going to see some of that here in this film as we get cutting and start in on the breakdowns. We're going to start here in 2019, and I think that this is going to become readily apparent. Is that the level of play from teammates around him was a factor in Noah Gray's game. and You're going to see, as we get into what this play is about and what he demonstrates, this is Gray here. You're going to see that he's just going to run a little bubble and be able to receive the ball in a place that allows him to, to really rumble through, and his whole point is making this first down marker right over here that's going to be his focus that takes some doing he's going to have to move himself around uh the, these two defenders are both going to be trying to get into the play he gets a decent block but i wouldn't say that it was great but really watch what he brings out here in this alignment where he is uh split all the way out uh, really in a stack you could see him have this kind of formation you could see him stack with one of the chiefs wide receivers there's some interesting options to use this type of play from and it really comes down to getting the ball out quickly and getting it into his hands letting him try to get something done uh this is going to be a little bit of apparent of what the difference between uh, a professional quarterback, especially with one with the cannon that Patrick Mahomes possesses, versus a college-level player. And when we roll this, pay attention to what happens once he gets the ball. The de delivery is going to be a little bit interesting before that, uh, but it is not the end of the world. Here we go. As this goes, I'm going to pause it here. There's a little hand, a little fake that's going to happen in the pros too he has stood up made himself a bigger target now the ball is getting delivered he has to make a really nice catch this is indicative of, of what he was dealing with honestly in 2020 more than this season where even simple passes weren't necessarily on target and he had some uh, great catches that he had to go make so he makes up for his quarterback here makes a nice grab and is able to dink right off of this makes a lot of contact but pushes through in order to get this first down now again we're going to slow this down a little bit more there's a little fake and the ball is a little slow to come out would like to see that ball delivered a lot faster but here he's cutting right off the block of his wide receiver and he's got one two three and there's another defender out to this far side coming down as well and he makes that contact, uses uh, the body as he can, and looks to make contact too. And here he's got a good three yards to go, pushes, pushes, pushes. 
He just barely makes it to the line. His knee went down a little bit behind. I don't think this was a first down, but this gives you an idea of what Noah Gray can do with the ball in his hand, and that's what's the most important thing. Nice catch. Again, this this could have easily been something that got away from another tight end, or H-back, whatever you want to call him. Uh, and he makes the most of it, slips through, makes his push, and knows where the, the marker is, makes a nice play. This next play is him now in a new alignment, come back down closer to the line of scrimmage. This is somewhere where I expect to see him in Kansas City fairly often. Um, probably moving, motioning between here and, and a true H-back, kind of like right behind the tackle's uh, outside foot. I can see a lot of that motion coming to the Chiefs offense. We'll see if that actually happens. But this is going to be a play that is taking advantage of what they had just run with this receiver, which was just a, a nice jump ball fade that unfortunately the quarterback wasn't able to deliver in a spot that put him in bounds. And so they weren't able to take advantage of the matchup that they got. So they come right back with it. And now they see that they've got this defender, a uh, pretty long limb guy, um, one that flips his hips decently and I think you're going to see what happens here but they're going to run a similar action in that they're just going to stem him off and let him try to go attack the ball up here one of the things that the Chiefs really like about Noah Gray is his ability to go attack the ball uh, you can see very easily when he does and when he doesn't in his film it's critical that he continues that trend going forward and we'll see as we go into slow motion, I think we're going to leave it nice and mellow here so you can see as the play progresses what we're going to get out of it. And at the snap, he understands that he's singled up at this point. He's looking him down. The defender isn't moving much. Now, Gray, I think, cuts way too early at this point. He has, in effect, not moved the defender hardly at all. If we back that up a couple frames, watch what the defender does here. As we roll forward, play begins, and he barely steps one step back, squares back up, and now he's coming downhill. This is, I think, what Gray missed an opportunity, and I think that's something that the coaching staff will be working with him here. If we isolate him on his footwork, this is something you're going to see over and over again. I think there's a lot of lost, wasted motion in what Noah Gray does in trying to stem his routes. And we'll see as this comes off. Uh, a lot of, I'm going to give you this kind of hip check, you know, dance my feet a little bit too much. And what it did is it didn't allow him to close the gap on the defender enough where his cut was actually effective. He does make the grab, but the defender has recovered enough to push him out of bounds and the play doesn't go for the touchdown that it should have. Now, you might see a little bit more from this angle over here. As the ball comes out, he's, he's in a position where he's got, even with that stem, the play beat, but the ball's a little behind him. And as he goes up... Nice grab. The defender's in good position and just pushes him out. But Gray comes down with it. This is exactly what they want to see from this player in this offense. And they're going to. I think that's probably the biggest thing that the staff is going to enjoy in terms of being able to trust him. That's going to be key. So, again, if he comes off of this route and actually eats up the distance rather than doing his stutter step here, he actually gets in a position where his cut is a little bit more dramatic. I would probably say that this should have been aimed at the back pylon, not mid-end zone. And as this goes, we'll put it full speed this time. He gets behind him. Again, if he hadn't had to do that stutter step, that's going to help him eat that gap and then when he cuts be that much farther away from him, right there it's a nice foot in the ground and he's turned to a 45 degree that you can see is going to pay off for him as he's diving here and the defender's got to get back here but the defender is still facing this direction and that is a problem for him that's something that gray's going to take advantage of as he gets down there and here just a nice catch I think this is going to be key for him. They're going to find ways to use him. Now, I don't see them throwing the jump ball that much, but if they do, Noah Gray's in a position to make it. Here's another look at Noah Gray. Again, in a pretty tight split here, just behind the line of scrimmage, being able to take advantage of what he has as a space defender. What are they going to do? Are they going to drop this particular edge guy? Are they going to bring this up to a shallow and let this come over the top? Are they splitting? Where's this backer going to go? There's a lot of questions to be answered here. But what we're going to see Noah Gray do is take advantage and run a route that he runs quite often. Uh, a little bit more in 19 than in 20, but I saw it on a bunch of his film. I saw it in a lot of games that he played in uh, 
on live, live broadcast where I couldn't get the all 22 for as well. And that becomes key. He's going to come up here and he is going to just run a simple out. Again, the problem is the wasted motion. I think this is something that you're going to see him correct as he comes off and he's got to get out to the sideline. If he is able to put his foot in the ground like he did on the last play that we saw, I think that that's going to be more effectual for him. We're going to slow this down and watch him come off the ball. Good fake right there. He got his that defensive end, didn't commit. Had he engaged, he was probably going to throw a block and then run a delay route is my guess. But he gets to space. He's now, what, seven, six yards downfield at the seven-yard mark, actually. Uh, and he's made his cut. Now, the defender was off pretty well, and he's coming downhill here. And so he didn't get a very clean cut, but enough of a small window to make that catch in a way that helps his quarterback out. Now, this is where gray is right here again and you can see he's he's looking inside he's trying to see what this defense is going to do because that's going to be his key again i think this was designed as a delay route and then he made up and made the next play for it maybe it was designed to go to him in the first place but we won't actually know because that's not what they did at the end of the day without the engagement of the defender he's kind of lost with what to do here and he just has to continue his route he's got some kind of key where this defensive back is playing off so he's got to feel like even if he does have to shove this defensive end down and into the tackle to help his tackle out he still has enough room where he can get a five probably written up to be an eight yard out and make a play and that's exactly what he gets done this guy disengages Gray's right on watching the defender now here this is not exactly what you want to see in terms of a nice hard cut it's, it's a little bit over his feet it's a little bit turning you'd like to see it a little crisper that's something I'm sure he'll be working on he said the other day that he's working on his route running with the chief staff and that makes perfect sense it's going to improve as things go along watch it again here as he sees where the coverage is he's gonna check on the defender and when that guy does not engage, he's right on to watching, putting some pressure on this DB. And I would like to have seen him try to n not belly off as much to kind of drag the defender forward by going a little bit more vertical uh, up to here and then a hard cut. But he ends up kind of bellying over and then getting out. And I think that allows the defender a little bit extra time to cut that edge. That's something that you don't necessarily want to see happen all the time. Right there, again with the stutter step. You can see that, but nice clean catch. Gets his hand out and looks to make yak. I think the Chiefs are going to like that in this offense. I want to see it one more time. Super slow-mo. And watch his feet as he comes off into this stem where his feet go. Stutter and another. If he can learn to hit that a little bit harder, I think he's going to juke some guys out of his coverage as we come back to the field night has fallen on this ball game they're going the other direction now you see again that gray's lined up in his short split off the line of scrimmage and is not quite sure he's got to have a feel for what this defender is doing but really his coverage is coming from the same defender we saw in the last play up high and that's that's what's going to give him his opportunity here this is going to be a very similar route it is, uh, what is it, a six yard out that he's actually going to hit the plant foot on. And watch the way that he comes off. It's a little bit different, and this is key to what Noah Gray's got to do when he comes into the pros and is able to get loose a little bit. Plant, and he's gone a little bit more. Now again, he's widening out as he's coming off of that. He shrugs off the tackle and makes the yak, and I think that's probably what the Chiefs are most excited about. But again, as we pump this up to full speed, would like to see him sink his hips a little bit lower, but this is a better cut in terms of planting his foot and getting out to the edge than we saw in the last play, which is the same route. Makes his turn, gets his head around nicely. It's here that the power comes in, and I think that's an underrated aspect of his game that we want to see him do more. And here it is again from the end zone view, plant. And again, I think this was less wasted movement and something that he can clean up. He's clearly aware of it because he ran these two routes, even though they're the same route. He ran them drastically differently in terms of when he planted and how. A little bit of a head fake. I like that. But his shoulders were going to the outside, and that's what's important here. It allows him to shrug off the tackle and make this big play. 
Now, I would be remiss if I didn't do a no gray film where I showed him block a little bit. He is lined up here in, in the traditional H. I don't think the Chiefs will use this particular alignment. I think he'll probably line up more with his uh, feet split behind the feet of the tackle. So he'll be maybe a yard farther outside in the NFL. We'll see if they try to play with the college formations. Andy Reid has been very open about uh, trying to emulate and take what he can from there. But this is going to be a simple play where he's t to hook and form this wall so that the tailback can take the ball and turn it up. And he does a good job here. Not a devastating block. That's not what he has to do for him to be successful and for, more importantly, the play to be successful. He has to make contact and be able to move. He hits this linebacker, someone who just got drafted in this last draft, and gets enough space to get the running back to the edge. Now, if that running back had hit it a little bit harder, I think he actually goes a little bit farther, but that's a whole different topic that we're going to have to see. Again, makes contact here, moves his feet, allows the, the linebacker to disengage, but he has made the block at this point. This is something that you're going to see from Noah Gray because this is the alignment the Chiefs don't use. Again, he is far inside here, and we're going to want to see him come out here and be split behind this tackle's outside foot. I think that's going to be key for him. But running out of the H, we saw him earlier in the day come cross and wham block in there too. That's something that he is going to bring to the table pretty early and often. Uh, and let that be what it was with... Uh, a quarterback that I think he was more comfortable with. And we come forward now to 2020 uh, with a different quarterback under center, uh, someone that is probably less experienced. I don't know the, the whole background of his quarterback here. But here we have Gray, again, split out a little bit wider than normal. Uh, this is their version of the 3 by one that the Chiefs actually run fairly often. So you can see how this might come in handy as another piece that could translate into the, the pro game. What he's going to do is, rather than the outs that we saw him run earlier, he's going to make a little bit of a bubble here and uh, a cut across the middle of the field. And this is something, uh, the in-breaking routes from the opposite side are something you're going to let him do in the NFL. I think crossing linebackers is something he can take advantage of, even at the NFL level. The problem is going to be is he's got to have the quarterback bait to play to support him. And so that's where this goes a little bit of awry. I think he does a good job understanding as this play rolls forward, I'll show it to you the first time, that you have these linebacker drops. I think there's a little bit of confusion here with these linebackers, but you have one coming straight back, you have both of these guys coming over, and he realizes that he's bellied it a little bit, and now he can cut it off and get to the side. Now he's beaten every defender here, but the quarterback has not stepped up in the pocket and is actually going to go down here with a, a very late throw that goes well behind Gray, not exactly what you want to see, but with a new quarterback, a new year, uh, you can't, you have to expect that that's going to, to happen. You can't expect that it's going to be always roses. Now, again, he's going to be split out a little bit this direction. He's somewhere off screen a little bit, but I want you to watch here as these linebackers start to drop as we roll this. Uh, he's going to be coming down here as these guys do their drops. In and out, in and out. And here, right here, Gray is coming into the frame. He's made his cut. He's taken his second plant foot. And now he's got a, this linebacker all the way turned around. Here he's beat. Right now, if this ball is out, this is a big, big play. But the quarterback didn't step up. He's getting hit here. The ball's coming out very late and goes well behind Gray, short of him as well. Uh, not something that the receiver can then make up for. But you want to make sure that you understand that He's taking what the defense is giving him, and he's taking advantage of it. Here, he starts to turn it a little bit. I'd like to see this be more of a, of a straight stem and a hard cut. He's starting to round it off a little bit. That's another aspect of route running he'll have to fix. But he understands where he is, understands that it, from this point, with what he's done, he's in good shape. But he, he knows if he goes here and tries to go around the back of the linebacker, even if he's trying to get shallow, but certainly if he's trying to get deep, that he's going to run into too much defense. So he cuts it underneath, gets this guy spun around like a top, and that's something that if he can do in the NFL is going to pay off for him dramatically. As we get ready to watch him finish up this play, this is something that I think we will, and I hope we will see for the Kansas City Chiefs. Right there, makes that play. If that ball's on time, he's got another eight yards. And I want to wrap this one with something that I think could be very interesting because if you can get Noah Gray some tighter coverage, you can see from where we saw uh, earlier in the film, 
this DB was was deeper, a good 10, maybe 12 yards in earlier. Now he's got like a seven yard cushion. And this is a matchup that I think the Chiefs like. And watch what he does with it. As this is a shotgun, again, this is a two by two, but not anything outlandish and definitely something that we could see the Chiefs run. As we run this play forward, as Gray attacks, he gets on the inside shoulder just like he needs to. And that is it. Now, this, this DB is dropping to a spot, but right here, Gray has it. If he actually attacks the ball or if the, the quarterback leads him a little bit, he's got a shot. Instead, the quarterback leads straight to the back of the end zone, allows the DB the speed to pick up. Now, that DB was actually uh, made a heck of a play there. But when we watch this come in from the far side, you can see that Gray makes his cut. He's here. The ball needs to be out by now because if you're leading him to this spot here, that's a done deal. Instead, the ball sails back over here, and that allows the DB the time to get caught up. So watch Gray here. I'd like to see him try to attack the ball a little bit more. And That's the one thing here that I think from the receiver's point of view that you could do to try and help your quarterback out by here really go and try to high point that he does make a leap but it's not I think putting it out of the way enough to stop the DB from making what is a, a nice play on his part we got to give him credit here but it does come down to I think the level of quarterback play in 2020 wasn't up to what it was prior and it didn't allow Noah Gray to really shine bad for Noah Gray and for the Duke Blue Devils but good for the Kansas City Chiefs and being able to acquire him Right here, just tack it. Go get it. Uh, and I think that's something that will come with time. You're going to hope that he can figure that out because I think he's going to be very successful when that happens. Now, that's it for Noah Gray. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I think he's going to be a great addition, and you're going to get a lot of enjoyment out from watching him with the Kansas City Chiefs. Make sure you like and sub and hit the bell notification for everything that we do around here. I would appreciate it. We're going to have more for you as we go forward, and they're actually going to be on the field as we watch this video live, you're going to start to see Noah Gray more and more. I'm really interested to see what the staff does with him. We're going to have a lot to talk about as we go through this training camp and on through the season. Thanks for watching this one. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.